Why does God allow suffering? It's a common question, usually not asked in a dispassionate way, but usually asked in the midst of some sort of suffering and agony. It's hard enough to go through this kind of hardship, but how much more so when we don't understand what in the world God could have in mind? That's one of the reasons why so many people push for this notion that God has nothing to do with our suffering, that God wouldn't send suffering to anyone. And such a notion is uh, wildly unbiblical and absolutely irrational. The Bible itself, in fact, in Isaiah 45, the God of heaven and earth boasts that he sends hardship. And the idea that the creator of all things could not be able to stop hardship, that there could be something stronger that could, whose will could uh, impose itself over the, its maker is ridiculous. We have to acknowledge that God is sovereign over all things, including our suffering, and there actually is a perfectly clear and reasonable explanation for why he would allow it. There's actually a number of reasons. One of those reasons begins, and it's important to remember this, this is uh, akin to the language of the scripture on the issue, but we'll, we'll connect them in just a second. One, it happens because we're guilty. When we start asking questions about human suffering, we need to forget this ridiculous notion that bad things happen to good people. That only happened once, friends. And that's because the good person volunteered for it. That's Jesus. The rest of us stand guilty. The rest of us are guilty of sin against the living God. And the punishment for sin is death, eternal death. That's what we're owed. So first, there's nothing unjust in God in allowing suffering in our lives or even sending suffering into our lives. That's a baseline we need to start at. Secondly, and this is how it relates, the scripture uses the language of the ridiculousness of pottery complaining to the clay. We need to begin by acknowledging that we're sinners and we need to begin by acknowledging God doesn't have to answer us. He's our maker. We can't put him on trial. He doesn't have to tell us his reasoning. We don't even have the right to assume that we could begin to understand it. He is the potter and we are the clay. But in his grace, he does give us any number of reasons why he sends suffering. One, he sends it to glorify his name. That glorification happens in the execution of justice against those who have rebelled against him, which is all of us. That glorification can happen in the alleviation of suffering by those who belong to him. That is, when you, in the name of Jesus, give the thirsty a cup of water, God is glorified. But for that to happen, there needs to be somebody thirsty. Somebody needs to be suffering. God is glorified. We, we see this when Jesus heals the man born blind. The disciples are saying, well, who's sin?" And the fact that everyone's sinful, everyone's guilty, that no one's treated badly does not mean that we can then measure how good we are on the basis of how badly we suffer. So the disciples are looking at this fellow with, with no sight for his whole life. Who sent him or his parents? And I mean, it's got to be heartbreaking for that guy. Jesus's answer was no. But here's why he's blind. And then he heals the man so that you would know that I'm the light of the world. So he is glorified. The second thing is, for those who are inside the kingdom, for those whose judgment for their sins has already been received by Jesus, when we receive suffering, it is for our good. For God's glory and for our good. Paul had a thorn in his side. I'm persuaded it was kidney stones. And he cried out to God, please deliver me from this. It's so agonizing. That's why I think it's kidney stones. It's so awful. It's so terrible. It's so painful. And God says, you know what? I'm going to leave it there. And the reason I'm going to leave it there is because it will help you remember your dependence upon me. It was a blessing for Paul 
to have that hardship and whatever hardships he leads you into when he walks with you through the valley of the shadow of death are for your good.